Is Microsoft Defender good enough to protect you or should you buy an antivirus? Well, let's start super simple. If you have an extra 50 to $120 that you just don't care about, then yes, just go ahead and buy an antivirus and be done with it. Whereas for the rest of us who can do something better with that money, let's dive into Defender. Now you may hear people say Microsoft Defender or Windows Defender, they're kind of used interchangeably and this is the free antivirus that comes with your Windows 10 and Windows 11. Now if that's not confusing enough, Microsoft in their infinite wisdom has a product called Microsoft Defender for individuals because, well, because. This isn't free and it does come as part of your Microsoft 365 subscription. But I'm not gonna talk about that in this video as technically it isn't free, you need to pay for Microsoft 365. I'm only going to focus on the free antivirus that you get when you have a Windows computer. Oh, and yes, I do know about the excellent PC security channel that has extensively reviewed Defender and yes, it did fail on some stuff, and we're gonna address that as well. So when it comes to security, we have to start with the weakest link, which is usually the person behind the keyboard. All the best tech in the world isn't gonna save you if you keep ignoring the warning signs. I mean, if you think it's a good idea to jump out of a moving vehicle at 90 miles an hour, ignoring the flashing warning on your dashboard, no matter how safe the car is, you're going down and that is on you, not on the car. Same thing with security. If you're the kind of person who believes that you won an iPhone in a competition you didn't enter or your long lost uncle has left you millions of dollars which you will get the moment you submit a form with your social security number and your credit card information, there is no tech that's going to protect you. Sure, it's going to warn you. Sure, it may even block the link to the website. But if you dismiss those warnings and proceed anyway, that's on you. This is gonna happen both with the free and with the paid antivirus as well. However, if you're security aware, and I'm sure you are as we're hanging out here on this channel together, then you're just not gonna fall for that. So because you're security aware, now the option to buy or not to buy is very different. And it boils down to what you do online. If you send emails, browse the web, watch YouTube, stream Netflix, use Google Docs, then the free antivirus is perfectly fine for you. But you must also be one of those people who regularly updates their computer software, which means you get the latest security updates that plugs up any holes that are discovered. And boy, there are a lot of those. If you do the updates on your Windows automatically, then again, the free antivirus is good for you. Now, if you don't do the updates because you have a thing against Windows updates or because you think Bill Gates is out to get you through those updates or the updates breaks your computer or whatever your thing is for not doing the Windows updates, then the paid version of the antivirus is better for you. The paid antivirus is completely separate from your Windows software and it gets its own updates independently. Now, another person who may want to get the paid antivirus is someone who deals with sensitive information or maybe you have a high powered job that makes you a target for any one of the thousand nutter groups that are out there. Then too, I would not rely on the free version. I would pay for that full protection. So why is that? Doesn't Defender and the paid antivirus offer the same protection? Well, yes, they do, but Windows Defender has a heavy reliance on cloud detection. This means that it uses Microsoft's online infrastructure and databases to identify threats, which means that it needs to have an internet connection. On the plus side, it knows about the latest malware the second it is in their system. The downside is that if there is a brand new malware that has just been released or something very custom, it can do a poor job at detecting and stopping it. And that is the downside of Windows Defender. It has a weak behavioral protection. That means 
if a program that it doesn't know about acts like malware and tries to delete data from your computer or begins to encrypt files on your computer, Defender doesn't always detect that. And this does tie back in to what I was saying about the person. If you're torrenting and downloading cracked software and installing apps from weird sites, then I would suggest getting the paid version of the antivirus as malware typically uses those places to hide inside other programs. If that's you, no judgment, then Defender may or may not pick up something that is brand new that it just doesn't have the signature for it yet. Also, if you are typically offline for days or weeks at a time, then the paid version is a better way to go since those apps do a better job at weeding out anomalies on your computer. Bottom line is Defender really needs that cloud connectivity to be the most effective, whereas the paid antivirus apps typically don't. Yes, they still need connectivity to the internet to get the latest virus definitions, but if something's new and weirdly acting on your machines, they do a better job at stopping that. Now, I will say that the paid version of an antivirus or anti-malware is usually nicer to work with and you get more features. Depending on which one you buy, of course, some of them are bundled with like VPNs and password managers, maybe even parental controls, and some even offer identity protection that monitors your info if it's leaked on the dark web. If you want all that stuff, eh, you gotta pay. If you just want a no mess, no fuss, don't bother me kind of thing, then Defender is just perfectly fine for you. So why did Defender fail on the PC security channel? Well, the PC security channel does an amazing job and well worth checking out, highly, highly recommend. I watched a video called the Windows Defender versus Top 200 Ransomware, which was uploaded about two months ago as of the time of this recording. Now, if you watch that video, you will notice that Defender did in fact fail at some points. You will also notice that a pop-up appeared on the screen and he clicked on install. And at another time, there was another app that he clicked on and where various malware started to run after that. Now, should defenders have stopped those from even running in the first place so nothing popped up on the screen? Absolutely, no question about it. But going back to the whole, it's a user thing, if you're going to just install something just because something popped up on your screen, you kind of got to take some responsibility for that as well. And if you continue to watch that video is one piece of malware that was so new that Defender didn't even know about it. Much to my point about not always being spot on with weird behaviors on the computer because it needs that cloud detection. It was so new, it wasn't even in its cloud database. So the TLDR. Is Defender good enough or should you buy an antivirus? Some of you are itching to get into the comments to tell us how Defender is cracked because in 1998 you had a virus and it destroyed your computer. Well, honey, it's not 1998 anymore. Defender has come a long way from being, yeah, an afterthought to being a pretty decent antivirus solution. In fact, Three laboratories that test antivirus solutions for a living have given Defender their top rating after it passed all their real world tests. So forgive me if I take independent laboratories testing recently over the, but my friend's uncle's roommate once had a virus because that Defender missed it. So it boils down to a simple thing. If you've got a basic awareness of security, you don't download dodgy software, you know not to click on links and email from people you don't know, and you're not gonna fall for that scam that you've won the lottery. Then Defender is just fine, as long as you update your computer. If you want all those other features like the VPN and the password manager, yeah, then you're gonna have to pay for an antivirus. One thing to be super aware of is that Defender will stop being supported when Windows 10 comes to an end of life this year which to me is absolutely unacceptable and ridiculous. But if you don't wanna to change to Windows 11, and sorry, you don't wanna to go to the whole Linux situation, how can you keep your computer running safely after Windows 10 comes to an end of life? Hmm, check out this video right over here. And before you head out, give the video a quick thumbs up. Hopefully that was useful, and I'll see you in this video. Let's go.